reminds us that he is our God and along with that he'll do healings and blessings and he'll take care of us we just have to know in our heart that he is our God and being uh, there's a lot of people in here that are going through one illness after the other me included which is a constant with me so I trust in uh, the Word of God all the time where He says He's going to heal you and take care of sicknesses and grumbling and griping, which I had a spell of that also, and we all do. But in Exodus here, when uh, Moses was having a hard time with, uh, with the people, with their grumbling and, and their complaining, then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made a decree and a law for them, and there he tested them. He said, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in the eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decree, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians. For I am God, the Lord, who heals you. Now, he's not saying we're not going to get anything. But he's not going to give you a disease I don't believe that's going to be everlasting. Fifteen years later, I'm here. And he says here, I will heal you. What we need to remember and understand, he is God. So that song is perfect today. And uh, If you're going through something like I am, remember that. Stand fast, babe. Stand, stand fast because God promises you that he's going to get you through that. You know, God will make a way when there just seems to be no way. And he will, amen.
Jesus. There is power in the name of 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 Jesus. Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name. Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name. Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus.
every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain.
a lot that a chain is no stronger than its weakest link. A lot of times we still got a lot of chain hanging around, but we don't realize that God's already broke the link. And, you know, you can just drag the chain around and you think you're bound up by it, but if he's already broke the link, the chain's not strong because it's already had the link broken. And I think one of the things we need to do is we need to come to a realization that he's broken every chain. Everything that tied us to the old, Everything that tied us to defeat, everything that tied us to death, everything that tied us to all of this stuff, everything that Adam gave us, he broke it. He did away with it. And I think one of the things we got to come to the realization is we got to quit carrying that old man around on our back. Because you know he's been dead so long he now smelleth. He's like Lazarus, you know, he's been he's been hanging around so long that he stinks. And you gotta to begin to realize that you gotta to learn to walk in the new man. The new man's a man of faith. The new man's a Josh came up to me and he said, he said, we know that there's power in the name of Jesus, but he said, if you don't know it by faith, all it is is information. Faith helps you to experience. Faith walks it out for you. Faith brings it to reality. Faith helps you to understand. Say, well, I got this pain. Yeah, I know you got that pain, but you need to get faith that'll walk you out of that pain. And, and I hate to bring it up, but Robert got up here with a mic. And, and the truth of the matter is, how many people have you prayed for in your lifetime that had, they told them that they were going to be dead in six months? That's 15 years ago. He's still here. He may not be the healthiest dude on the street, but he's still here. He gets up every morning and starts breathing. He's got one of the most powerful testimonies there is. You don't know how many people hit, you know, that down in um, down the Demore Cancer Clinic. He's gone down there and prayed for and encouraged and strengthened and, and done all of that because why? Because he's a miracle walking. I did my share down there. I just haven't felt the urge of God to go back down to the Dittemore Center and pray for all them cancer people. But that was one of the promises God gave us. Get the chains off. That's for every one of us. We just gonna have to walk it out by faith. We're gonna have to believe God that it's what God wants in our life. Amen? Amen. 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 How will they know? Unless they got a preacher. A preacher doesn't mean you're uh, 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 somebody stands behind a pulpit. That's somebody that's got the word of the Lord in their life and they got an experience of faith to walk it out. Amen? 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 Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You try and say something, man, or you just waving your arm and trying to exercise. Well, wait a minute, I can't hear you. Here, Danny. Wait a minute. Give her the mic. I 
I was just telling about my friend, the one I had you guys pray for, and I told you how she came back with, um, they found out no lung, lung cancer. She was stage four, and they found no lung cancer and um, no bone cancer. They're doing radiation right now, but every time that she was, not that, I'm not puffing myself up, but every time that she had to go to rate, um, chemo, I would pray for her, but sometimes I would just drop a card off at her door, you know, to encourage her, because praying for her on the phone, I get nervous, and I don't like to pray in front of people, but God is helping me with that, so um, they said that they did the bone, and there's no cancer in her brain, so as far as right now she's cancer free she's still going through the radiation but the only thing I want to want her to really know because you know she said the doctor did all this but I keep telling her remember how many people pray for you and so you know sometimes they think that it's just the doctor and it has nothing to do with God but I keep telling her and so I just wanted to tell you that right now She's cancer free, so. Huh? You know, my my thought about all of this is. That's just fulfilling the word of the Lord that God has given us. You know, sometimes we can't be everything to everybody. The first thing we've got to do is hear what the voice of God is saying to us and what God has said to us, and then do that, and then walk it out. Because it isn't by sight, it's by faith. We walk not by sight, but we walk by faith. And, and, and that's the one thing we gotta, we got to get over the idea just that when we pray for somebody, it's just routine. you you got you to gotta begin to ask the Lord to show you that prayer doing its work in that individual. That's how faith works. It gives you the eye of the Spirit. It gives you the understanding of the Spirit. And that's what God wants for every one of us. He wants every one of us to begin to walk in that dimension and express in that dimension so that in our gatherings we're not we don't have to come in with with trials and testings doesn't mean you won't have them but i mean you come in in victory because of the fact that you rejoice in the fact that while you're living the life of christ out there while you're living the life of christ out there you're manifesting who he is because that's what they need they need the real deal they don't need religion they don't need any of that what they really need is the real deal and sometimes God has to take us through some stuff if you don't think so the greatest writer in the New Testament was was a guy who had been Saul of Tarsus God had to take him down to become a Paul and when he became a Paul, guess what? God used him. God used him. And when we allow God to do that dimension in our life, we walk by faith, not by sight. We begin to walk in that dimension. We begin to express in that dimension who he is. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Thank you, God. You just did it again. Can I share something real quick? Can I share something real quick? Yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to, um, God is just so good. He has everything under control. <laughs> and when you see it happen, it's just so wonderful. But God's prophetic voice is being fulfilled in this hour in this house. And um, as I was on the phone with Brother Bud the other day, he reminded me of a prophetic word that Peter had gotten, that by the time he was 20 years old, he would be leading worship. Peter, how old are you? <laughs> in this house and I just that is such an encouragement to me that sometimes things have to happen for things to happen there's also another prophetic word that I had gotten during press per and it said um, that I that 
someone would come and they would take my place. And I no longer stand where I used to stand. And the word was that you will always be involved in worship, but that someone else would be there. And I just see all these things coming into place and that we have hope in this hour. And I just wanted to share that this morning. I was so encouraged by this group of young people. They, and this whole entire praise and worship team, they are gonna, each and every one is gonna start fulfilling prophet, the prophetic over their lives. And I testify to that. And that's just such a good thing. And I am so excited. So I just wanted to share that. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 